Hi, Neo, is it you? Yeah, it's me. Man. Yeah, nice yes. seeing you. Nice finally. to see you here. <laughs> now we're here to, today in Oslo. Yeah. And I would like to talk about you. And maybe you can, maybe you can tell about yourself, okay. about your company, because you're an international business strategist. And it will be nice to hear about your story, how you start from the beginning, and uh. how you go further. And how you actually come to Norway in Oslo, because you're in San Diego. I know, it's like, man, it's, it's a very long story and probably in this short period of time I'm not gonna be able to explain everything that I was able to probably experience in life and, you know, the challenges, the opportunities and the growth that I had, but <clears throat> let's say I started when I was three. Three years old, I was looking in the stars and I was thinking, you know, what's the meaning of us? Are we alone or there is something, someone else? And that existence question was always like the most important thing for me in my early stage. And then, you know, it actually followed me through, uh, uh, through the primary school, the secondary school, the university. And later in life, I just realized that this is what I want to do. And I want to start, you know, identifying that mystical thing, the purpose of life in every single human being and specifically connecting with the businesses and the business growth and how this purpose of life impacts your business. If, if it allows you to grow the business or if it doesn't allow and maybe there are some roadblocks on the way. So this is in a nutshell what I do today. So let's say you asked me how I came to Norway and you know that was an interesting experience. Um, at, uh, when I was 24 years old, I had a tremendous success in a career. I was organizing massive conferences. I had already brought thousands of people in 11 conferences for energy efficiency. And in that career path, I got burned out. I got involved by friends in a uh, specific business opportunity. They take the papers and I arrived to meet them and they actually uh, kidnapped me physically and beaten me, uh, put me in a forest standing alone. And in that time I realized I may be something doing not right. And I start looking more inside myself, not outside myself. And I start meeting a different people in the world, you know, from different fields, success, business, human behavior. So in the beginning I can heal myself. And later I was able to go through all these internal challenges and conflicts and find out a very specific way, how can I help other people? So since the beginning of childhood, I was very interested in some sort of sales or businesses. So today I connect this existence, the meaning of existence and purpose with the sales and business and companies, usually in small uh, businesses in the world. I work in 12 countries already. I've been exploring 37 different industries. Um, so I helped clients there. I did more than 1,100 personal performance breakthroughs for employees to make them more effective, more efficient, so they can expand in companies. And I helped to increase 40, more than 42 million euro profit for different businesses. So that's in a nutshell. And if you ask what I do, which industries more are interested in? Uh... It's usually professional services. So out of the 37, let's say construction businesses. Yeah. Because construction businesses have so much potential, but most <laughs> mostly the people that actually manage them or own them they're not interested in all these you know big management things and so on they have very simple ways of dealing with people internally and externally they're late with projects they're late with um, uh, they are over exceeding budgets that they plan and you know I believe personally that construction industry is one of the most important industry at all because mm -hmm. the offices we sit, the mm -hmm. houses we live is because of the construction people who actually mm -hmm. build that. So I go with that specific idea that guys, you can maximize what you do and you can create much better environments with purpose, with your energy and you, with your you know commitment and you know you can make much more than you make today. And we find these performance obstacles in companies and we create strategies, we neutralize them, we find out how these performance blocks align with your profit or is mm -hmm. it not profitable. So it's a very interesting journey because mm -hmm. I go in, I learn everything about the industry, I learn everything about the company, about its competitors, about its opportunities, about its resources. And then we create like three, six, nine, or 12 months strategy, how mm -hmm. we're gonna be able to expand that company and grow in a much greater dimension than they are today. So constructions, marketing. Um, yeah, like construction, it's uh, with the real estate also. Yeah, kind of real yeah. estate developers. I work with real estate developers. Uh, I worked with designers. I worked with other consultants. I worked with cleaning companies. Um, I worked with 
um, so project management companies, uh, mainly professional services where you use human resource and the human meaning and their human soul in the company to produce and create the final product because that human is involved in that creation process. So let's say it's different than from product manufacturing. Yeah. You go in, in a you know in a factory and then a machine is doing everything. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not talking to machines. I don't know how to talk. So there's yeah. other people that talk to machines. I do with people because I know that everyone is there with the right purpose. And if that purpose is aligned with the company's vision and mission, usually they get engaged in the company and achieve much better results than they've been before. Mm -hmm. And you're mostly working already with established companies, yeah? Not with the startups that they're going to just start the business, but or... I do work with startups as well. It depends on in what stage the startup is. And I know, you know, um, four years ago, I had a amazing startup idea. I wanted to create it and I, I I needed a little bit of information how to create a startup and about stages and I found a course um, by Stanford University it's called Technology Entrepreneurship. It was an online course and I joined that course with my idea but somehow as I say always there's a thing happen you know with a reason. Mm -hmm. um, some seven people from China they had an interesting idea. They wanted to do the car sharing platform in China and they invited me to become a team member in that course and I said all right my idea can wait a little bit that idea is interesting and I'll get a little bit more experience probably with a team instead of alone and we went in that I went to that team we um, we def redefined a little bit the business model into a, a parking share pr platform so instead of car sharing platform to parking share because in China it's a very big thing with parking nobody finds the parking so it's like an like Airbnb for parking spaces. Yeah. And we created models, we created interviews with clients, we created surveys, we did nice videos, and this idea was voted two times in a row, number one idea in Stan Stanford's technology oh, entrepreneurship really? course, and we won number one idea, and because of that, they asked us to present that idea in front of the Stanford University professors and three investors, and Chinese said, oh. you know, European, they will accept you better than us. Yeah, yeah they have a lot, a lot of different, um, mindset and I said okay this is an opportunity for me to speak in front of Stanford and I prepared the presentation that was first ever my international English presentation and I was so funny I was you know challenged I was um, uh, nervous I didn't want to do that I didn't want to look bad but that was the first time that I really embraced that challenge and I said if I'm not gonna do that nobody will do that for me and that's one of the things that I tell mostly in my in my clients if you want to grow, you will need to embrace your challenges and pains in order to grow because muscle in your body grows through pain, psychology grows through pain, your company will grow through pain, you will need to make changes. And those who are ready to embrace that pain, they grow. Those who are not, they usually stay, stay in the same level and I don't work with them because they're not ready. So sometimes I disqualify the clients as well. So that's one of the components to understand what I work with my clients. So, so you must I like to go from the comfort zone, yeah? Yeah. Uh, take out yeah. your shoes from yeah. your... And in that moment, I took that out of comfort zone. My friend from, from, from China in that course, we, we, we sat down for seven hours. I was preparing and polishing that presentation. I presented to startup uh, mentors. They gave us a little bit more feedback about the idea. And after that, they actually invited me to become a startup mentor in, tech, in Stanford University's technology entrepreneurship course. So I served two years and I saw the startups coming with the amazing ideas. Three months, they're shut out. Coming again, amazing ideas. Three months, they shut out. And I realized that most people in startups, why startups have so much failure? Because they don't know yet if that idea is congruent with what they want to achieve in their life. Uh, so it means that you need to like what you you do or it, it is it is yes uh, you know most startup founders so far I've been I'm not saying everyone I don't want to say that I know everything there's many different you know every single human being is completely unique and different so I cannot like generalize everyone but I what I see mostly is that some startup founders they picture that beautiful picture of a startup founder that amazing life with boats, Ferraris, money, mm -hmm. but they ignore the fact that you will need to struggle at least five to seven years in order to go through that. You know, you're gonna get investors, a lot of money, but then investors will control you, they'll put you stress. And most people are ignoring that fact and they see that, you know, positive side of the startup. They jump in it, they join that startup, and then when they 
face real problems of business one month later three months later six months later mm -hmm. they realize that the pain they need to embrace to grow the business is actually they're not ready for that and they usually either give up or they slow down a little bit or they just realize that that thing is not for them and they just go back to do something what is really congruent to them and that it could be writing it could be video creating it could be some problem solving everyone has that internal feeling and you guys you do a lot of work with you know video creation now i see you probably can work day or night morning or evening it doesn't matter time does not exist for you because you love what you do and these companies that people love what they do and they're grateful for every opportunity these companies succeed in a long term so mostly you need to be in a flow they say yes yeah? yes flow most people call it flow some people call inspiration some people call uh, like different mental states, you know, and light and business and so on. There's a very much different definitions, but the core concept is the same. You, when you do something, you would like to not feel the time and space. What happens around you doesn't matter, and how much time you spend doesn't matter. Albert Einstein mentioned is time can either contract or expand. Yeah. So let's say you wait for uh, a bus, yeah. and you know one. One minute seems like an hour because you feel time because you're yeah. waiting for something. So this is the opposite of flow. Especially this in the winter, is, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're at work and if you're a job and you're waiting until it's gonna be, you know, five o'clock in the yeah. evening or Friday. Oh my God, it's Friday. Oh no, you know, oh my yeah. God, it's Friday again. Oh no, it's Monday again. That already tells that you're doing something which is not congruent to you and you would try, and I would advise to go somewhere else because that opportunity that you will love doing is maybe right behind the corner. So it means you already, you are in the flow. So you, what you do is uh, make a strategy for the businesses and you are in the flow because you uh, like to do the things. You can yeah, you work 24 hours. Yeah. Of course, you need to have time yeah. for sleeping. You but... love it. And it's, it's sometimes, you know, that uh, like I'm going to tell a little bit on a surface level. But when I work one on one with clients, we go very deep and usually I ask a very specific, precise series of questions and we go even in childhood and we find out what specific things happen in childhood that created a need, a vacuum or a void and mm -hmm. that void now drives that behavior and motivation for them to do that thing that are actually now in flow. Mm -hmm. So the moment you realize and like connect with that specific thing, it really makes sense. So you go in the past with the clients, you try to figure yes. out what was the... All the answers in the past. Time. Like most people look in the future, that's great, but future is only one component. Look at the past and try to realize what is the present moment telling you about your past and how you can better strategize the future. And all the answers are already there. You just need to have either yourself or someone that could help you to access that. And that's what I actually do with my clients. I have, I'm trained for that. I've been exploring different industries, different models, and we extract whatever is there we bring from unconscious mind into conscious so you can manage it. Carl Jung described that process as individualization, understanding yourself from an unconscious level. It's like driving a Ferrari, yeah. but you think it's going only about 70 miles or kilometers per hour and you don't yeah. know it's yeah. going more. One day you, you know, open the, the, the car pass or you open the, you know, the hood and you see that the motor is much bigger and then you realize that you can you know, go five times faster. So that's what we do with companies and individuals and companies. The same thing with, with accelerators. Yeah, this is uh, the same thing with the experiment with the, uh, with the flask, uh, with the box, you know, yeah. they put on the bottle. Yeah. And uh, you know that experiment, yeah? Yeah, I've heard about it. Yeah, so you just, uh, if you have a bottle yeah. and uh, you have put the box inside yeah. there and then you close them yeah. and the box are jumping there inside the bottle and when you take out the cap yeah. the box continue to jumping and they cannot go out of the bottle yeah so this is the same thing that yeah. uh, you they cannot see the horizon yeah they close minded yeah they, they know one they know one way of doing things and they try to achieve that and i'm not saying it's either right or wrong for some people doing one thing in life and doing it continuously and repetitively is the way to success and they in the big context of the world and probably the universe if you look bigger they fulfill that specific place in the world because they need it. Because some people are great to create, but terrible at finishing. Mm -hmm. So if you're great to create and bring that buggy person who is doing the same thing over and over again, and you tell him, this is the rule, this is the formula, this is how you do it, this is the process, they will do it until the rest of their life. 
And that's great because they will, ab will be able to sustain your company. And it's really a key to understand that there's neither wrong or right people, there's neither wrong or, or right decisions. It's only the decision made in that specific time that serves you in that time and you need to learn a lesson. There's no right or wrong people, it's only the people that maybe doesn't fit in the current situation but they fit in other situations. Maybe they're better at family than you while you're better in business. So I believe you, you master your life when you stop people putting people in pits or in pedestals and you know that everyone has a purpose in life that serves and it serves either together with you or separate from you and when your internal voice and your own voice becomes much louder than the external voice and external opinions what you should do or should not do in life because that's the key for a long-term fulfillment your own vision and uh, amazing achievements in life and you know I've been traveling now, my, my schedule is pretty tight and I mean I travel every second day and you know sometimes in Europe, sometimes in the United States, mm -hmm. South Africa and you see these different cultures and you see that these people are living in that perspective, in that cultural understanding on that you know city or yeah. country and you go and you see how people are different and then you get a global perspective and you know you travel a lot as well and you know that different countries have different perspectives yes, and exactly. wh while you live in that perspective you think that's the best and the most right perspective and there's nothing else exists but the moment you go somewhere you see that people think differently there and then you start thinking maybe people when they work in companies in small businesses they think that in this way manage the business is the best and most efficient so I come and I say let's look at a little bit different perspective and let's look how we can else do it differently more productive more profitable what are the resources that you didn't capitalize yet what we could um, you know where we could improve the performance is the CEO performance at a top level or employee performance at a top level um, maybe there are some people that are very demotivated so maybe we would like to change something about these people or change the people themselves so it's many many different ways so to summarize I go in companies and I look for exact problems I don't want to say I'm a sales mm -hmm. consultant or a leadership mm -hmm. coach because when you put a label, then people expect you to do one thing. Mm -hmm. I go in a company, I find the exact real problem. If I can solve it, I solve it. If I cannot, then I bring my friends who are specialists in LinkedIn and mm -hmm. Facebook and management and let's say sales optimization mm -hmm. in different specific fields. And then I'm bringing that knowledge and, and understanding that wisdom into one aspect in that complete puzzle to help uh, people to solve that problems. And that's what I love because when you solve problems and you solve it with your heart, with your passion and inspiration, you don't need marketing because people come by recommendations yeah, all exactly. the time. So today I'm like fully completely booked and busy. And I'm grateful for that because I found something that really inspires me and that helps clients. And in the future, I believe that's the only way to work. Um, solving real problems, so not saying who you are, because it's not about you at the end of the day. It's about the client and his problem and your ability to solve it quickly, uh, with inspiration and with gratitude. Exactly, with the inspiration and with the, with the thing that you want to do. Yes. Not yes. for the money, because money yeah. comes afterwards. Yeah, the, that's true, but don't forget about money because most people, especially the spiritual world, say, I don't need money. Yeah. I mean, in the end of the day, based on the universal laws and the laws of nature, one of the laws of nature is a balance, yeah. the polarities between the black and white, mm -hmm. between the night and the day, the yeah. sun and the yeah. moon. So when you do actions, make sure that your actions are aligned with the polarities of altruism and narcissism. Uh -huh. what you do to the world and what you get out of doing that all right because if you're gonna do only you will forget about yourself and you will one day say oh my god i'm tired of doing that they're not paying me everyone wants better life quality and the purpose of the universe is to grow and the universe wants you to grow both personally financially and any other way but if you will help someone and they will help you grow financially personally money wise you will have a complete balanced perspective of growth which in the end of the day I think is the key to fulfillment of every single human being on this planet. Oh, that's, that was very good feedback. So, always take money to keep the balance. Uh, not the money, but of course, good the best service. Take the money for your service if you are Don't forget there. to take the money because, you know, there's the altruism. It will eventually 
create resentment in you one day and you will start questioning yourself. The things I do and the specialties and skills I have, they're necessary for the world and to solve some specific problems in the world. But if you do only without giving back, getting back, then one day you will feel a little bit your self-work will go down, you'll start questioning yourself, or is, is it the best thing I do? So don't forget to ask and set the price for yourself because well, no one ever will set your personal work until you do it for yourself. Thank you very much. That was uh, yeah. really nice uh, speaking to you. Thanks, man. And, it's uh, really a pleasure. It is, uh, I think we had valuable and a lot of interesting stuff to do. So it was a small coaching even about uh, what to do. And if you want to have any strategy for your business, if you're a startup or a big company. You can visit my website, www.neoross.com. I just put it. And yeah. you will put that link. Yeah, yeah I just put the link. It is somewhere here. You're going to see it. Connect so. with me. You know, ask any questions. I'm really inspired to answer whatever I can. If I cannot, I'll connect with someone. Thank you. Thank you.